episode seven has been filmed before a live studio audience. Yo, texting, let's figure this out. Figure out who we're inviting yet, email? We can call, cold calling. That dude is fun, but he's like, so last episode. Direct mail. Try three episodes ago. Well, that leaves online and, oh no, no. That guy shows up at the worst times. He's effective, but he is annoying as, oh God, here we go. We're not home, we're not home. Turn off the lights, turn off the lights. And while it can be annoying, door knocking is still very effective in this market. In this video, we're gonna go over door knocking, texting and email as direct to seller methods and we start right now. Hey there friends, my name is Anson Young and I am a real estate investor and agent here in beautiful Denver, Colorado. We do fix and flips, we do wholesaling, we do wholetail and we're building out an agent team to just kick more butt. I don't know, it's fun should try it. I'm also the author of this book, Finding and Funding Great Deals, out through our friends at Bigger Pockets. At the end of this video, I'm gonna leave a discount code so that you could buy this book for 20% off at the Bigger Pockets bookstore, so stay tuned for that. Speaking of Bigger Pockets, you are right here on their YouTube channel, so please give them a like, a subscribe, hit the bell icon, you know, you know the drill, everybody says the same thing, but they really appreciate it and it's free and it really does help with this type of video. And as always, if you stick around to the end, there are action steps at the end of each one of my videos because I don't want you to just watch and forget what you learned. I want you to watch and then take action, find good deals, get big checks, have lots of fun in the process, let's go. Since today we're covering three different direct-to-seller marketing approaches, I don't wanna waste any time and I wanna get right into it, but right before we do, I want to tell you who we are marketing to. This is our targets. This is the same as episodes three and four, which are marketing lists and driving for dollars. So if the amazing Kaylin from Bigger Pockets can link those up here or up here, I don't know where they go, up there, over here, that would be amazing. So if you wanna check out who we are marketing to, watch those videos, this is how we are marketing to them. Here in part one, we're gonna talk about door knocking. And here's a fun fact. I got my start in real estate by knocking on doors for another investor. So talk about getting thrown into the deep end of the pool and just hoping that you can swim. Spoiler alert, it was brutal. Phoenix summer plus door knocking, it was, it was not fun. But door knocking is just about as direct as you can get. You walk up to the house, knock on the door, and get down to business as soon as possible. So just like cold calling, you are on the spot immediately. You have to build a rapport and get your message across very quickly and efficiently and you have to be okay with having doors slammed in your face or being called all kinds of things under the sun that I can't say here on YouTube and keep it family friendly. Believe me, I've been called pretty much everything in the book and that was just in my first summer. But I don't want to scare you away from this. While it's very direct and there is a steep learning curve, it's actually a really good way to get in front of sellers who may not have a phone for texting. They may not uh, answer their voicemails. They may not answer their phone or look at their mail. But if you could get in front of them when your competition doesn't want to, that could be all the difference. So having a script and practicing with that script are gonna be the top two things that you're going to need in order to get comfortable with this strategy. And you're gonna to wanna to tweak your script depending on the type of homeowner and the type of situation that they're in. So here are some of the best practices for door knocking. And the first one is go at the right time. Typically the right time is either noon or between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. This is when people get home, 
They may not have sat down for dinner yet. You can catch them right before there's something else important that's going on. You definitely don't wanna go at night, so make sure you're hitting the people at the right time. The second one is a pretty good safety tip. It's just let people know where you are. And I would send a list to somebody that you know of the properties that you're going to visit so that they know where you're going to be and approximately when. And the third one is don't go alone if you don't have to. They do emphasize this a lot for real estate agents who are women. And I think that a lot of the same best practices apply to real estate investing as well. So if you don't have to go alone, it actually works pretty well to have a team. That way, if you run out of things to say or you don't know exactly what to talk about, then you have somebody else there to kind of bounce off of. And I think that a man and a woman team tends to convert the best. There's like kind of the best of both worlds there at the door. Number four is just be smart. Stranger danger, don't go into people's houses if you're uncomfortable. In fact, anytime that I wanna go into a house, I will text somebody beforehand and I let the homeowner know, hey, I just need to send a quick text to my business partner so that he knows where I'm at, that I'm stopping off at this address and I may not get to the rest of this block because I'm taking my time and talking with you. That kind of thing. Just be smart. If anything feels weird at all, just don't do it. It's not worth it. And the fifth one is to bring a notepad. If nobody answers the door, you're already right there. You might as well just write them a quick message. Hey, Bob, this is important. Please give me a call and then leave my phone number. And nine times out of 10 with a message like that, they are going to absolutely call you. And then you can kind of work on your calling script and take them from there. But you're already there at the door. You already made that effort. Therefore, why let it go to waste? Bring a notepad, leave them a note or a business card or whatever else you want to leave them. So door knocking is a great and relatively cheap strategy. You're using your time and your gas in your car and that's about it. The downsides to door knocking is that it's not very scalable. Unless you're hiring a team of people to go canvas neighborhoods, you can typically hit just a handful of addresses in one neighborhood before driving on to the next time. You're gonna actually spend more time driving than talking to homeowners. And the other drawback is that it is a very high stress and, and high skill activity. You have to know what you're talking about you have to know what their situation is. You have to be good on the spot with answering questions, building rapport, all of that stuff to get them to the next step, to get them closer to the closing table. So I don't door knock all my leads. I only door knock the highest priority leads that I really, really, really want to get in touch with. And I'm using a stacked marketing approach, which I'll get into here in a little bit. Part two is email marketing. So you've skip traced a list and it comes back with phone numbers, which you need for cold calling, but it comes with a bunch of email addresses as well. Well, what do we do with these? Email marketing is a very cheap form of marketing. So why let those go to waste? So here are some quick email tips. And the number one is legality. This isn't legal advice at all, but there are some gray areas to email marketing. So typically people need to opt in to an email campaign and consent to being emailed. They have to give, give their permission for you to email them. They have to be able to opt out at any time. So that's where you see all the unsubscribe buttons when you go through your junk email. Otherwise you technically have to classify it inside the message as an advertisement. So I said from a company email campaign, does this pertain to person to person email? If I'm sending one or two emails and not in a big coordinated campaign, does it fall under the advertisement rules? And I don't think that it does, but again, this isn't legal advice. If you're just emailing one or two or five or 10 sellers, you're probably fine, probably up to a uh, hundred a week or something like that. But if you're emailing 10,000 sellers at once, that is definitely a different classification and might fall under different rules. And while cold calling and texting definitely have some consequences that are coming down for not doing it the right way, I haven't seen anything for email, especially on a small level, if you're just a, a smaller investor, just doing your thing. But 
definitely check into the rules and regulations so that you don't get in trouble. I don't want you to get in trouble. <laughs> I definitely don't. The second thing with email is that I like to vary the message just like you would in a direct mail campaign. So I'm not sending the same thing over and over and over and just seeming like some crazy robot. I definitely want to mention that I've tried to call them or that I've sent them some mail and kind of a stacked effort of just building on each other. They understand that this person is trying to reach them in a few different ways. Maybe this is important. Maybe this is something to consider. And the third part is that a lot of the email blast softwares now require the recipient to sign up for your email campaign. So it's a lot harder to go into one of the big email blast programs, just dump in 10,000 people and just start blasting out emails. Now they are following the rules and regulations set so that you're gonna have to figure out different ways if you're emailing more than a few hundred people a week. Otherwise they start flagging you as spam and so it goes like straight into people's spam folders and your efforts are kind of wasted. So don't let any of this deter you, of course. I have used email to great effect. Uh, in fact, a deal that I did with a partner, we did one email campaign to just a block. So it was like five or six people on this block and got one of them to sell to us. We never met the seller. We just traded emails from that point, but it all started from a cold email right into our email box, and we traded things back and forth, got to the closing table, and that was a good wholesale deal. It's all about hitting the right people at the right time, of course. So why not try all these different methods, especially if they're cheap or free or they're high priority on your target list? And part three is texting or SMS. I don't know. I just call it texting. So you blast out a bunch of texts and you get a bunch of deals, right? It's just that easy. Just like direct mail and email, I do like to vary my message and a lot of the targets are the same from the previous categories. But the heyday of text marketing is starting to turn and starting to maybe come even to an end with new regulations that are coming down for marketing in this method. And like email, the one-off person-to-person texts are probably just fine and not covered under this, but there are a lot of text blasting softwares and companies right now where you can load in 10,000 people into them and just blast out texts all day. That is what is being cracked down on. So if you have a list of your highest priority 50 sellers that you wanna get in contact with, texting them all in the series of a week from your personal cell phone probably doesn't fall under this, but again, this is not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. If you want one, go get one. So a lot of these companies are actually scrambling right now to either meet the requirements and go ahead and keep in business, or some of them are just kind of deciding to fold and go on to other methods because the hassle of some of the hoops they have to jump through are a bit crazy. But as a consumer, you get a bunch of junk texts. I get a bunch of junk texts. You kind of understand why there is kind of a little regulation there so that we're not just flooded with texts all day from people that we don't know or care about. This form of marketing is still effective in these days. If cold calling and direct mail isn't working, you know, grandma has a cell phone these days. They have a smartphone. And so they might just respond to a quick text into their text box, text box, inbox, and go from there. Although please make sure that your lists are updated. I get a text once or twice a month to sell a house that I sold in 2005. And those people never respond. So when I tell them, yeah, name a price, I'll sell it. And they never respond. So make sure your lists are updated so you don't send out texts to people who are 16 years re you know, removed from ownership. It's just ridiculous. I don't know why they send me anything. Which brings me to a pro tip. This pro tip is about stacking your marketing efforts. So in today's day and age, competition is really heavy. There's just everyone and their mom is out there trying to buy real estate. So how do you stand out? 
You can't just do one thing anymore, unfortunately. Gone are the days you could just send out some cheap postcards and get enough deals to do what you want to do. My 2019 Bigger Pockets convention presentation was all about stacked marketing. That's how important I felt it was then, and competition is even heavier now in 2021. And stacked marketing isn't for every list that you have. I do it for the highest priority list. If you stack a list and you figure out who's on multiple lists, and then you have a stacked marketing approach on top of that, you could take your top 500 people that are most likely to sell, they're on a bunch of different lists, and have a very strong concerted stacked effort towards them, you're gonna have some great results. And this means that you're calling them, you're texting them, you're mailing them, you're knocking on their door, you're trying to call their, you know, their aunts and uncles and stalk them on Facebook and figure out where they're at so that you can have a better chance of getting in front of them and of course having them sell you their house. Starting with one thing is just fine, starting with direct mail or cold calling, but then being able to snap in these extra things as you get some success As you get some money rolling in the door, you can expand your marketing and go from there. Starting from one thing is fine, but being able to stack your marketing approach to the right people is hugely profitable. It's hugely successful. All right, now it's time for our action steps. The first action step is with door knocking. Get some scripts together this week and start practicing. The more practice you have, the more confidence you'll have when you go up to the door and you knock and you're a bit more prepared on what to say. The second one is with email. So try testing out some email and stack that on top of your current efforts of direct mail or cold calling and see what happens. You can also mention the other ways that you're trying to reach them like, hey, I've been trying to call you or or, hey, I sent you something in the mail last month, you may not have seen it. Here's my message again, that kind of thing. And the third one is with text messaging, also start testing to stack this on top of what you're already doing. Prioritize the top 10 or 20 or 50 people in your marketing lists and send them texts over the next week or two and see what kind of response you get. The next video in this series is going to be about estimating repairs so that you can fully evaluate the deal because how do you know it's a deal until you know how much it costs to fix it, right? I mean, uh, it seems like an important part of that equation. If you want to hear more from me, find me on Bigger Pockets, connect with me there, send me a message, say hello, say that your videos are awesome, say that they're terrible. Either way, we connect, it's a win-win or just find me here on YouTube. I'm sure you'll find me somewhere around here. But thanks again for your time, and until next time, we'll see you later. I can hear you guys. I can hear you breathing. I know you're home.